Good morning, guys. Paul Goldsmith, PJG Outdoors. Uh, headed up the road. Um, it's a beautiful morning. In 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 my my kind of beautiful. It's it's kind of overcast. Overcast. Now, don't get me wrong. I love the fall sky when the when the sky is so blue that it just looks like you can see forever and ever. But in the fall when hunting season's going on i really i really love these kind of days to actually hunt um overcast you know and a little bit of rain not not enough rain to even call it rain just you know if you look on the windshield i don't know if you can see it or not but just uh just enough to every now and then you cut your windshield wiper on and uh it does it smears more than it knocks the water off so it's you, give you an idea of how much moisture is getting on the windshield not enough to really bother anything but but it, it it's a great mornings like this are great for hunting um, because the deer activity seems to be higher due to the moisture content in the air they can actually smell even better than normal bringing me to the point of what I wanted to talk to you about um, just a quick um, just quickly I wanted to talk to you a little bit about some of the things that I've learned about hunting deer over the years been hunting deer for a long long time been very successful at hunting whitetail deer and killing some big bucks and, um, just just passing along some of the stuff that I learned. A lot of the stuff you, I'm sure, already know. Somebody hunting right now. Um, well, maybe not. They might be working. But anyway, some of the stuff you you already know. But I'm gonna cover. I'm gonna try to cover in in these videos. I'm gonna try to cover a lot of different things. So I'm gonna start with the basics. Uh, any of you guys out there that are new into hunting. Uh, or maybe been hunting for a while and uh, just want to learn a few things. Um, but anyway, the first thing I want to talk about was scent control. And now this is not, I'm not saying that uh, this is the most important part of deer hunting. I'm not saying that this is the most important thing to learn about in hunting whitetail deer. But it probably is. More than likely it is. Because um, it doesn't matter how many deer you got in your area. It doesn't matter how fresh a sign you're sitting on. You can have a, a trail that's just completely worn out. And uh, deer coming through all just all the time. If those deer can smell you, if, if your if your scent gets in that deer's nose, you're not gonna get. You're not gonna. You may see it when it blows and runs off, but the chances are good you're not even gonna see that deer. He, it, that deer is gonna avoid you, and not all deer react to human scent the same. Some deer blow, and blow, and blow, stomp their foot, have a fit. Um, and some deer just just merely just move off and, and, and leave the area or or circle around you or whatever they choose to do but you don't even know they, they you don't even know they were there you, you, don't, you don't have a clue but the biggest buck in the woods might have just been about to come down that trail that you're sitting on and that deer caught scent of you and avoided you like the plague you know how how strongly if you're driving down the road and there's been a skunk run over in the road and you go over it or run by it, that how strong that odor is and how offensive that odor is. That's basically the way the whitetail deer picks up on the human scent. Whitetail deer have a much, much more advanced sense of smell than a human way way advanced and and they use that <clears throat> they use that sense of smell 
to detect danger ahead of them. And that's why a lot of big bucks like to put the wind in their nose and you think, ah, oh, they just walk the way they're gonna go. And it, and it just depends on which way the wind's blowing. Some of them do, yeah. There's a, uh, a, I'm, I'm sure a lot of does and a lot of young deer, a lot of young bucks probably do, but you get them old big boys that's been living in that area. Can you imagine, think about this. Um, if you've got a hunt club and let's say you got 400 acres on that hunting club. And let's say you got 10 people hunting that 400 acres. And there's somebody on that club land every, every weekend, sometimes through the week, out of those 10 people, gets a lot, it gets a lot of hunting, a, a lot of hunting pressure on it. And uh, can, you, can you imagine being an animal that weighs in excess of 200 pounds and has the, the only thing that that animal can eat is to go out into the woods out in to the property or wherever to find it the acorns the, the corn the green briar the honeysuckle this sort of thing he has to go out there and find that food and he knows where it's at, believe me. That he, he, he knows where that food's at just the same as you know where your refrigerator's at in your house. But he goes, he has to go out there and find that food, and he, and he lives on that property, uh, let's say 10 years and then dies of old age. You get him on camera several times throughout every, every season and watch his horns get bigger and bigger and then start to come down a little bit. And he survived on that property the whole time, bred the does, fed, done everything, and nobody ever got a shot at it. A lot of that is because that buck learned how to uh, how to put the wind in his nose and use that in his favor, and be patient, and take his time, and and let that nose. You know that it's like having radar, because as a human, we can we're walking and we we have to go by what we see. And that's as far as we can reach out. That deer can reach out for a long, long ways by using the scent molecules in, in coming into his nose and making sure he's putting the the wind, letting the wind look out ahead of him, and he's smelling and sm and he can and he can smell so much better than we can. So you gotta beat that nose. I said all that and say this, you have to beat the nose. If you don't beat the nose, I mean, if you're sitting on a hot trail and your wind's uh, blowing, it, the wind's blowing straight from you, straight down that trail the way those deer are coming, even an old yearling, even a little yearling will pick up on that. You can get, uh, you know, you can avoid sometimes by getting real high in the tree or something and letting the scent carry over over. Um, but even that's not a good idea because a lot of times the, you're, you're feeling what the wind's doing and you're not taking into consideration what the thermoclines are doing. You need to get, always carry one of the scent checker with you, one of the powder, blow that thing and, and, and watch it. Used to bow hunting, we used uh, we used lint, uh, just little small pieces of lint or uh, or little small fine pieces of feather that we could watch actually go through the air, and you could see it a good ways out, and you'd see it go out, and then it would drop down or raise up, depending on what the thermocline is doing. R normally, uh, the thermocline in the morning is rising, and in the evening it's it's dropping. So, um, you know, you can, that's, a, that's normal. Uh, sometimes it's different than it. It's not always like that, but for the most part, that's, the, that's what it does. But if you're, uh, if you're sitting on a ridge in the morning, thermocline layer rising up, normally it'll take your wind and, and shoot it off of that ridge and deer down below you in the bottoms and, draws that might be working towards that ridge will will normally not smell you but then there's other days when that thermocline layer 
uh, just isn't strong and it's just not working it's not taking your scent like uh like it, it uh, depends on the barometric pressure how how well the thermocline layer is working so that's why in bow hunt we used to use all the time we've used that lint and it worked great the powder works great because the powder is so readily available you you can buy it and you squeeze the bottle and the powder comes out and you can watch it flow through the air but you need to get one of those guys i tell you what if you don't if you don't beat the wind uh, if you don't pay attention to wind if you just hunted every day wherever you wanted to and didn't even worry about the wind then i mean, I mean all your deer that you, you kill you're just getting lucky and you want to you know luck's a big part of it of course but man you want to do things that increases your luck increases your chances and putting yourself in the right wind to hunt that area is one of the most important parts of it <laughs> when you find a, a area that you want to hunt always at least pick out two separate areas to hunt or separate stands that you can hunt that area from i mean you don't have to be like one here one straight across over there it may be up or down that ridge a ways that you can get and hunt hunt it on two different winds always try to find at least two different winds that you can hunt that increases your chances of getting to hunt that area um because you might have a, a a big buck using or a good buck using in an area leaving a lot of signs scraping rubbing got it wore out and uh and you want to hunt that deer well then most one of the most important things is to have a couple of different stand site locations that you can uh, that you can take advantage of and and hunt that uh, and still hunt that area no matter what the wind might be doing the wind might be blowing out of the north and you've got a you've got an area picked out that you can you can hunt that wind but if it's hunt blowing out of the south then uh, you need to have at least another one. Um, so anyway, always do that. You got to do that with your, in your scouting time. Pick out, you find that area, you find that place. You say, man, this that deer's using this ridge real good. Um, I wanna, I'm gonna set up on him right here. If he come when he if he comes down this ridge, I can kill him right here. Then go ahead and mark that, mark it down put down the, the what the wind needs to be to hunt that stand and then go find another place you can hunt that same area with the opposite wind that'll increase your chances of getting to hunt that area you know because you can hunt it anytime but you always want to make sure you're you're hunting it on the optimum the, the best wind you want to hunt it on the best wind so pick out your two sites and they'll help you out. Scent control, it's all great. Wash your clothes, you know, in, in uh, uh, scent free detergent, that's fine. Um, I think the main thing is just keeping your hunting clothes clean. I, like, I do spray mine down with uh, scent away spray or some sort of scent away spray i'm not saying that's the brand name but some sort of spray that uh, kills the human odor on your clothes or odors i keep uh that little dude plugged up in my truck all the time that's a little ozone machine ozone machine that puts out ozone in the in the truck and helps kill odors you know tucker rides around with me all the time dog odors are very offensive to a deer but not like human odor i'd rather i'd rather smell like a dog than a head of human but uh <clears throat> yeah do that um nose jammer can't say enough about nose jammer it I, i've seen it work i know it works spray down good with it if you want to um fox pee we used to use fox pee all the time can't seem to find the kind of fox pee that we used to use the old tinks uh, red fox pee uh, and that glass bottle I, I, it's, it's, I can't find it no more so I thought about trying to trap a fox put him in a pen and collect my own it's very good works great 
Yeah, you can you can uh, put a little bit on your boots and uh, then when you get to your tree, after you get your stand hooked up right before you climb, sprinkle a little bit around your base of your tree and I, and then it, it, it helps a lot because it's strong and they smell it all the time and they and it doesn't bother them it's not offensive to them they're not scared of the fox um, a lot of people in the past I think have heard seen use raccoon I've never used it so I don't know how well it works but I do know the red fox pea was one of the most effective scent controllers or uh, scent killers for a human odor that I'd ever seen uh, or still have uh, but there's nothing out there box P nose jammer the low zone machines you buy for $800 or whatever they cost I can't afford one them suckers are you know I'm sure they work but my goodness you know normal average Joe deer hunter can't can't spend that kind of money on a on a, on a unit to take in just to kill the nothing takes the place of play in the wind keeping up with the wind check it religiously before you go hunting check it once you get it into your area with your with your little bottle of powder and hunt the hunt the stand accordingly don't always don't just always go by what you read on or what on the uh, on the news or on the internet about what the wind's going to be doing let me tell you with uh, those little draws and hollers and especially up here in the mountains which i'm going up the mountain now but especially up here in the mountains, those that wind can come around and and it can be blowing out of the northeast, but it, it'll it'll hit the mountain and come up a draw and be blowing totally opposite on you. So check it, and uh, if you get to your stand and check it, and it's totally different. It's better to leave that stand and go somewhere else, even if you're late, than it is to go ahead and hunt that stand. Because every time you put your scent in that deer's nose. That makes him a little bit more wary about coming through that spot. In fact, a lot of the big bucks will not come back through there if they if they smell a human scent. That's it. They don't care how many does are in there. They're not going to come through there in the daylight hour. I guys can't stress enough how important scent control really is to deer hunting and being successful. It don't help. It you know it's not important deer, to deer hunting if you're if you're not worried about harvesting a whitetail deer or you know going out and being successful but if you want to be successful and especially killing big bucks then you got to play that win and you got to work it really hard take it seriously and and keep up with it all right guys um remember to uh, before i quit remember your equipment too don't don't forget about your equipment um, you don't want to leave a lot of stuff at the bottom of the tree. I don't care if, the, if you got the wind right. You don't want to leave a bunch of stuff at the bottom of the tree. You don't want to walk in there with um, two backpacks, a fanny pack, um, a bag of sandwiches, and, and, a, and a box of little Debbie cakes and, and leave half of it at the bottom of the tree. You don't want to do that. Take, don't carry anything in the woods that you can't take up the tree with you. Take it up the tree with you. Take it in the stand. Put it up there with you. Uh, I, I know a lot of people will take a big backpack and fill it up with their clothes because it's cold, but they don't want to get sweaty walking in, and they'll leave that backpack at the bottom of the tree. You might as well be, um, you might as well be leaving a, a, a sign down there saying, "Hey, I'm human. I just came in here. If you, if you want to live, if you don't want to get shot, you might want to go the other way." Take it. Don't take anything in the woods you can't take up the tree with you. A lot of you are going to say, that's bull crap. I do it all the time. I kill a lot of deer. I'm just telling you from my experience what's worked for me and what's not worked for me. I'm going to tell you, I'm telling you what has cost me deer and what has cost me to help me to, to, to take deer. Avoid leaving stuff at the bottom of the tree if you can. Please. Um, also, your equipment. Make sure it's spray it down if you need to. But the main thing is get it up the tree and be, and be in the right wind. I can't stress that any greater. Be in, hunting in the right wind for that area. All right, guys, I'm going to get off here. Um, I should be up to my destination here in about another 10 minutes. And uh, 
just wanted to share this with you. I'll have to do a little editing on it because I think it's 20 minutes long right now. And uh, y'all have a good one. Peace out.